A Silicon Valley bank's failure is having a real impact. Uh, you need proof of that? Look at the toy store Camp. They're a venture-backed retailer. And on Friday, they sent an email out to their customers to put up this ad. They put it up right there on their website. It said, when you bank, when your bank collapse, run, don't walk, right, to save 40% at Camp. Uh, the captions say, I never liked the Bay Area. And could this, this happen? How could this happen? This all sucks. Promo code bank run. Is that right? So, uh, Poppy, we're, um, you know, we're talking about kids' toys here, and you're live at the camp store right now. Poppy, what are you seeing? Good Hello. Hey, guys, good morning. We're with uh, Ben Kaufman, the founder of Camp and the CEO. This is your idea over the weekend. Um, and we're smiling because, thank goodness, your deposits are now uh, assured because of the federal government. But this was a last-ditch effort over the weekend to try not to collapse. That's how dependent you guys were on SVB. Yeah, about 85% of our company's cash assets were, were at SVB. 85%? Yep. Millions of dollars? Millions of dollars. Okay, so what happened to you Friday? So on Friday when we got the, the alert that uh, the FDIC was, was taking control of the bank, we, we had no idea what would be the next step. We, we did not know how long it was going to take for us to get our cash out. And to be honest, we still kind of don't. They say today, we'll see, we'll see what happens. You don't know if you can get your money. Well, we, hope, we hope we can, and we're so grateful that, that the Fed stepped in in the way they did. Um, but we did what startups do, which is we, we kind of took matters into our own hand, and we kind of had that fight for survival. Uh, it's a similar fight for survival we felt when, when COVID happened and we ran an experiential right. choice store. Um, and so we turned to our most loyal group of customers and said, hey, we need, we need inflows of cash right now. We set up a new account and, and kind of pushed our weekend sales to a new account. At J.P. Morgan Chase. At J.P. Morgan Chase. And we said, we need your help. And the outpouring of support was so the, absolutely incredible. Uh, to all our viewers and guys back in the studio, the, the reason that I wanted to have been on is I'm one of those loyal customers. I got little kids. You've got three little kids. I get this email Saturday, Friday afternoon, and I'm like, wow, they are turning to everyone who's a customer to try to save the business that's how dire the streets were for you yeah we had to pretend like it was the end of times and not pretend it, it felt that way yes um and we had to find a way to to you know fight for survival and that was again turning to customers providing them with a little bit of offer yeah right there was there was value in it for customers we offered 40 percent off and um we were we were so lucky to have have so much amazing support in all the things that keep you up at night as the founder of a business small business of a, as a startup did you ever think that your deposits that were largely held in, you know, securities, treasuries, bonds would not be available? No, I mean, like you said, like running a startup is hard. Running a retailer is hard. Running a D2C product company is hard. Running, a, running an experiential environment yeah. is hard. We never had to think about, like, the safety of our bank. Um, that's an added layer. You know? Okay, so I spoke to a lot of uh, founders this weekend, and the... Another startup founder and CEO told me that it was a requirement that if you got lending from SVB, you had to hold all of your cash deposits there. They required that. Is that true for you? It was true. Uh, at a certain point in our company's uh, history, we had a line of credit with SVB. We no longer uh, did at the time of the collapse. Uh, but because all of, you know, when you check out at the register, the money automatically went to SVB. It was all kind of wired in yeah. uh, to SVB. We never actually transferred that away once that um, but that's contractual notable. requirement I mean, went away. It would explain why so many founders and startups had all of their cash in this bank. Yes. Yeah. We, that was the, it was the bank to use. And they made you do that if you wanted to get credit from them. Yep. What do you, do you have a message for the management, Gregory Becker, the CEO of the management of SVB? Do you think this was bad management? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I run a toy store. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an economist. I don't know how to manage, you know, money at that scale. Um, I, frankly, like SVB was there for us when we needed them. They were yeah. there for other startups when we needed them. And again, startups are hard. And is that um, why you didn't pull all your money out when you heard all this Twitter chatter and VCs talking about pulling money out. We you attempted wanted, to on Thursday. And you couldn't um, get it. It just didn't settle at the, at the other bank. I have to think of all your employees first. Yeah. What, so we what were they saying to you? What were they feeling? Well, again, we were lucky to have an account already set up at J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, I, the first thing I said to our employees is that we have a little bit of cash there because if you pay in cash in our stores, uh, you know, the, the store managers ran it over to Chase. So we had a little bit of cash there. We knew we were going to be able to make payroll uh, this week. 
Uh, but we said, like, the future is uncertain. We don't know what the next step is going to be. And so, we again, we turned to, the, turned to customers, and immediately store managers were saying there was, the stores were packed, and, you know, what we saw online from people that were not only existing customers but new customers wanting to support this brand was, you know, I'll never forget it. It was Does, amazing. I'm so glad. Does it change, finally, how you hold your money going forward? Do you now split it up? I think a lot of heads of small companies and startups are thinking, do we put 20% in this bank and 20% in this bank and 20% in this bank? Yeah, I think that's going to have to be a consideration moving forward. Um, you know, I don't want to do this again. No, no one does. <laughs> we are glad you're okay. You're going to make your next payroll. We sure are. I mean, again, like we, the support this weekend was incredible. We're just going to go back to the regular startup fights. You know, the regular, you know, fighting, fighting for survival that every startups do, Look, even when their bank you, is stable. You made it through COVID. Yeah. You made it through this. I told you we get all of our kids. Thank you. Christmas gifts, birthday gifts here. The staff is always so lovely. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. very much. Thanks for ben me. Kaufman. Hey guys, back to you. Yeah, and the cool, one of the coolest old school rocking horses um, in that store, Poppy. As you know, they, you they love the old school <laughs> the rocking horse. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Yeah. It was great. I love that he said, I, "I'm a toy <laughs> store owner." Right? I'm not an economist. I'm not an economist, and I think that speaks to a lot of folks. Uh, what a lot of folks are dealing with.